At the end of the 19th century, one of the great puzzles challenging scientists was how the billions of nerve cells that make up the human nervous system communicate with each other. They knew that each nerve cell, called a neuron, carries electrical impulses. And many believe that the connection that allows the impulses to jump from one neuron to another was electrical as well, until our next great discovery. In the early 1900s, British biologist Henry Dale was conducting a series of lab experiments studying the physiology of nerve impulses. In one of his experiments, he injected adrenaline into a cat, expecting the animal's heart rate to increase, but nothing happened. Suddenly, Dale realized his mistake. It was the same cat that he'd already given another drug to, one that slowed the heart rate. With this mix-up, Dale realized he was onto something. If a drug could interrupt the nerve impulses that govern the beating of the heart, then the connection between neurons must be chemical, not electrical. Dale turned to his colleague, German biologist Otto Lowy, for help. To test Dale's hypothesis, Lowy conducted an experiment using two frogs. Lowy put the first frog in a saline solution. Then he electrically stimulated its vagus nerve, the nerve that controlled its heart rate. The frog's heartbeat slowed. Next, Lowy took some of the solution and applied it to the heart of the second frog. What happened next was extraordinary. Without any electrical stimulation of its vagus nerve, the second heart slowed as well. This was the moment of discovery. Lowy realized that the vagus nerve of the first frog had released a chemical which had directed the frog's heart muscles to slow their contractions. Here was proof that the transmission of impulses among nerve cells and then to the heart muscle was chemical. Lowy had discovered the existence of the first known nerve chemical, now called a neurotransmitter. Today we know there are many neurotransmitters in the human body, and researchers are using that knowledge to learn more about how the brain works and the chemical messages it sends. For example, low levels of serotonin have been connected with depression, alcoholism, and anxiety disorders. But as our next great discovery revealed, the nervous system isn't the human body's only method of communication. In 1903, two British physiologists, William Bayliss and Ernest Starling, were investigating the food digestion process. From their studies, they determined that the body produced digestive juices that helped break down food once it moved from the stomach to the intestine. But what caused the digestive juices to flow? To find out, Bayliss and Starling conducted an experiment. They took a blood sample from a dog that had just eaten a meal. They injected the blood into a second dog, this one with an empty stomach. Then something astonishing happened. Without any food in its belly, the second dog began secreting digestive juices from an organ called the pancreas. How had this happened? After more testing, Bayliss and Starling finally had their answer. As food reaches the small intestine, the intestine produces a chemical substance which is then carried through the bloodstream to the pancreas. Here, it stimulates the pancreas to produce secretions that help digest the food. Bayless and Starling called this chemical secretin. The first of what they realized was a never before seen group of chemical substances. They called these substances hormones. Since Bayless and Starling's discovery, 
More than 50 hormones have been identified. Hormones that are produced by glands and tissues and carried in the bloodstream as the human body needs them. There are hormones which affect the body's growth, metabolism, heart rate, and blood sugar. They even help us prepare for reproduction. Estrogen, for example, is one of several female hormones that helps prepare the womb for the baby and the breasts for feeding. 